I'm Matt Byrne. We're Western Fiber. Uh, we're a raw materials manufacturer. Uh, we're here trying to help the hemp industry to finally get its legs underneath it. My name is Wade Atterbury. I'm the CEO and founder at Tiny Hemp Homes, um, and I work with Western Fiber. And this is the basically the Riverdale Hemp Gin here behind us. My name's Tom Pierce. I'm general manager here, managing uh, cooperative cotton gins for 40 years and this is one of the locations. This location here is West Island Cotton Growers. The original gin was built in 1960 uh, and then we've got another location in Lemoore but this is Riverdale, California and San Joaquin Valley. This is a decade's worth of work behind us that we hope to unveil and, and share with the world. Uh, we, we're growing hemp for fiber and building materials and any other products that uh, have value. Planting seed varieties for our farmers so they can get a net return that's comparable to other annual crops. There's herd, which is the inside of the stalk, and the fiber is the outer portion that we're stripping off. This is what you get. This is the outside bark that comes off of the hemp plant, and then these are the herds this is the center, the, the center woody part of the hemp plant, and that, this is what we can further refine down and use for insulation in, in homes. Seed, feed, and fiber. We're just finding products that the consumer wants, and, and, they, and it looks like they want what we're doing. And we'll keep changing to make it work. It's a pretty straightforward process. Growing the plants is just dropping the seeds in with a grain drill and then applying some water with sprinklers um, to, to sprinkle, sprinkle it up to get germination and then uh, use drip for the rest of the way. For fiber, it's just you know, plant as early as possible, get a, biggest, a bigger plant, or you could, do, you could do two plantings. For fiber, you're, you're looking at 800,000 to a million plants per acre. You know, ideally uh, for the hemp gin, we want our stalks to be, you know, probably in, in this size right here. This, this is what works best uh, through, the, through the converted cotton gin. So when we do a dense planting, and say if we, if we planted early in March, we would harvest that in 90 days and, and get, you know, 12 foot tall plants, all uniform, you know, this size. This is probably five eighths. We want like three eighths to half inch. The ideal time to have harvested it for fiber would have been uh, right before flowering. Younger fiber, it's much longer, easier to peel, you'll have a lot more of it. The plant is cut with a sickle bar mower which uh, lays it down it's like you uh, would chop uh, corn silage. Raked, a traditional rake uh, like for alfalfa and then uh, we let it dry for you know, it varied, but we would experiment with that too, up to two weeks, and then uh, baled with a large square baler. And this is baled just like hay. The product was brought in from the field, weighed. We weighed it in over there at the scale, um, and it's brought into the gin just like we would cotton, and then put on the module feeder. And this is a traditional module cotton feeding system. The uh, standard modules, um, you know, eight foot wide, about seven to eight foot tall and um, about 33 foot long. We've modified the feeding system uh, to handle this. They control this from inside the gin, the speed, feed them into the, to the cotton uh, module feeding system. We're going to go through uh, you know, some pre-cleaning, we call it. Uh, the air comes over from, which we're not using any heat, but it comes over from a burner fan. The air will be pushing over there through that line, that back line, and then the material coming into the gin is on this front line and uh, is being sucked. This is a, called a separator, but we, this unloading fan actually creates the suction to pull. We're pushing and pulling the material to this first uh, machine up on the top there. 
call it incline cleaner, just a scrubbing. Again, we've changed that to handle this uh, uh, hemp fiber. <clears throat> what gets through that cleaner drops down this duct work here, and again drops through that vacuum, which just separates the uh, air from the uh, the material. Uh, we're pulling the, what we call the trash side. The bottom of that is being deposited in one of the cyclones out there. We're collecting that material. Bypass the dryer. This was the first stage dryer. We bypass that. We're going around that <clears throat> to the number number uh, two cleaner. Drop it in the top. There's two machines here: incline on top, then down on the bottom is a stick machine. We've modified those two machines. We will uh, be collecting the the fiber off the front and the herd off the back of that machine. The stick machine has uh, a modified saw that we built and put in there. Uh, it actually grabs the fiber, whips, whips the, the fiber and entangled herd against grid bars. The herd goes off through the grid bars off the back. The uh, fiber stays attached to the saw and is, is brushed off. There's actually a brush a rotating brush in it that brushes that fiber off and that's what you've seen coming out this slide. And this is modified too again. And goes over to this machine, another, uh, this called a, a uh, uh, incline cleaner also, it's a little different configuration. Then from there the fiber, again we're just talking fiber now, it's augered down through the uh, conveyor distributor and we've modified those two gin stands down there, the last two, which you can see they look different. And then in the back of those, we've changed the uh, lint cleaning process in the back also. This is what's going right now to a textile mill in China. We've got different types of reruns, and we call it, of, of that fiber. Any textile processing requires uniform length fiber. But we'll still be doing uh, uh, work on trying to uniform, make the fiber length more uniform. And, and the process that we've done here to take that um, to short, shorter fibers, which the paper industry is very interested in, um, making paper products out of, of those short fibers. We're already talking to people about that. So textiles are harder, um, harder to accomplish. You get cotton incorporated working with the hemp people, on fiber, uh, getting those blends together. Not going to be easy, but we need to do it. Blends of 50% cotton, 50% hemp, and it can go the gamut, whatever. I'm working with a mill up north right now that's, that's actually, they're down adjusting the twists and everything else on the machines. They know the machines very well. And uh, I took them hemp fiber, and they were able to blend that with wool and get it through. It's just a starting point, but they said this product, they can run that product in their little mill. So as soon as they have markets, they can't do it for nothing. They have buyers, it's going to go. This beginning uh, herd, <clears throat> we have three different sizes that we're making here. What we call a coarse herd, which is used a lot to bedding and those types, and can be used in building materials. Uh, this medium, which is two millimeter. This can be used for plastics, um, mixing in with the plastic resins. I've actually mixed this in with a roofing compound and uh, mixed it in with cement. And we got the fine, uh, almost like powder, uh, hampered 0.6 millimeter. So you've got, this basically is the fine dust, so it's got to pass through that. And this is a hammer mill, so the blades basically grind it through and that's how we get to any size. So we can actually create any product you need here. If we just know what the specs are, you give us the specs, we'll mill it to that spec. Running through a little uh, hammer mill. This is a very small hammer mill, but we've got a 100 horsepower hammer mill on its way here. We already know what we can do, and that's gonna be set in that area over there and, and up the production. It's just in the bulk, you know, in the bales, and they're going to break it up and feed it into this area here. They're going to drop it in here, and it's we've got a, a auger that's variable uh, speed control, where they can adjust the speed, how fast it's feeding into the to the hammer mill.
And that's, that's the hammer mill portion right there. The screen fits right in here. The diameter of the hole in that screen determines the size of the end product. It's being pushed through that screen, the material. We're taking it over to a cyclone and it'll be dropping into those super sacks over there. That, this fan is what actually creates the suction. It goes up to that cyclone, just like the cyclones outside. Air goes out the top. In fact, we're even collecting that. We're collecting the dust. It's real fine. It has value too. Then uh, the material off the bottom, which is the herd, it'll end up in here. This is where the, the product will be falling. We fill it up to 300 pounds. With this gin here, this gin sits fallow for nine to 10 months a year. If, that th if we had enough hemp, we'd run cotton for two to three months, and then we'd run hemp the other nine months. We're using a portion of the gin that we haven't used in 20 years. Western Fiber has leased this portion of the gin that, that we're looking at, and uh, it's working. It's generating income for the members now, because there's that lease payment, and it's being maintained. The employees here are happy, they've got work. Otherwise, this gin hasn't run cotton for two seasons. We can go back and make some changes here again, unchange, change them back to run cotton. So, we, I mean, there's different seasons, just like now, we can start up in January running hemp products and uh, go back to the cotton when that time comes. The two fibers work well together. You know, the two will help each other, the hemp fiber and cotton. There's a lot of demand for, for those blends. Get rid of the polyester, go to natural fibers, wool, cotton, and hemp fiber. My heart is in natural resources and saving and doing right by the environment. We, the data we got on, on the, uh, the hemp that uh, we grew out on those trials on my little farm, we had used uh, 19 to 20 inches of water for a crop that produced dried material that we're, that we're gonna process here, um, you know, around eight ton per acre. A terrific yield and uh, limited water, no herbicides, no insecticides. I think it's a crop that, that uh, once we've got the processing in place and the, the market, you know, is, is gonna be, uh, potential big change. Building trades, we use so much wasted products in the building trades, highly toxic products. We need to get away from that. So this, this is truly the answer to the building trades problem. You know, 50% of the waste that goes into our landfills is uh, construction debris. And there's really, nobody recycles that. So if we were able to start using a lot more hemp in our building products, again, it's, it's getting back to a natural-based product. So here's a, a little tiny hemp home that I'm working on right now. This is the hemp fiber insulation. This is called hemp wool insulation. So this is basically what we produce in the gin here can be turned into this extremely easily. It's just one more step in the process. This is a, called a non-woven process. We weave it, and even though it's called non-woven, it gets woven in. This has about 8% nylon in it to give it that binder and that holds it in. So this is made into insulation bats. This is hemp shield wood stain uh, that's on the deck. And so this is redwood. And you can see, I mean, even from the dew overnight, it still puddles up water on it. You know, it's been eight hours since the dew was here and it still puddles up water. So it's a great wood preservative. The hemp shield wood stain is from the hemp seeds. We just cold press the hemp seed. Seed production is another big area that I see farmers uh, realizing a profit. Seed production, feed. Farmers want to feed this. Dairymen want to feed this. We need it. The feed's very expensive right now. This is uh, the Lamour test crop. It was a five acre test field. Um, so this crop was planted March 5th. The thing about seed production is right now we're buying seed from China in this strain to do this. What we want to do is harvest the seed here. So we'll grow two fiber crops, start early in the spring, grow a fiber crop, plant another fiber crop, and then the last crop, 
we can get seeds out of. So it will only be like six or eight feet tall, but it doesn't start to seed out until like middle of September, September 21st, and then we'll harvest like in mid-December. So we're in a unique area here in the Central Valley where the seed production is unique to this place. We can go that far into the season and still not worry about a frost. So this is the place where the seed production for hemp is gonna happen for the rest of the country, at least with these Yuma and Jinma strains, these Chinese land race strains. We're growing and doing testing here so that we have our first trials done. Now we know what grows good, we know when it, when it seeds here. Right now, what we're gonna do is, with the hemp gin up and running, of course, fiber is what we're after. So we wanna be able to comb that fiber out and sell that fiber to a spinner that can take that and turn it into fabric. Um, and that's what we're working on trying to find right now. We have to have a buyer for the fiber to be able to spin that into the yarns and the threads that we can then make the textiles. And like if we do a silage cut, then it's a very easy growing process. The fiber is really where the high dollar is. The hemp insulation is really, a, it's a high benefit to society. It's a great money market too, but the benefit to society is incredible. We're gonna be able to take these toxic fiberglass and foam you know, insulation products and start replacing those. And that's what needs to happen. It, it all really hinges on the fiber because what we're gonna get from the fiber waste, you'd call waste, is what we really want for the hemp insulation industry. The seed feed and fiber, uh, the farm being its own biggest customer. So for the small introductory farm, if you start and grow hemp for your seed for next year, uh, it's a shortage, it's, a, it's hard for everyone to, to get enough seed. So seed crop first and, and realizing those real values back to what you would spend. So in the farmer, if you would grow it in a manner that like Wade mentioned of the silage chop, the silage chop is easy for us to process and separate the herd and the fiber. Now you can come out here with the rest of us hemsters and go out and try to find and build that market. They're going, guys, now I want to play in the market. Where is it at? Who's building? Who's buying? What is textile grade fiber?